Well, hello everyone. I am joined right now by Darshan CLG after a pretty pretty good weekend. Uh, 2-0. You looked really good in both those games, in my my generous opinion. How how do you feel about that? Were you talking about really good physically or like? Yeah. And actually in the game. No, just, I mean, when you were sitting in the chair, I felt like you really had it all together. Well, yeah. I mean, I really care about my looks, you know, and I feel like if people do that, you know, it's, it's just a good thing all around, getting that hygiene in. I feel like your hair has changed a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the hairdresser, like, he didn't speak English, so um, I wanted, like, the line on top, but then he just started drawing more lines on the side of my head, and I was like, what's going on? But I just kind of let it happen. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's how these things go. Let's talk about the game, though. Uh, because that's really what we're all here for, right? League of Legends? Yeah, okay. So yesterday you had a pretty impressive game with Xmithy where you guys just seemed like the the duo, the, the Trick 2G duo, I guess. Is, is that what it is? is? Was he a factor in, the, in that game? Yeah, we've basically changed our style to opening gates. You know, with picking up Trick 2G as our analyst, he's been doing a great job. He's like, Darshan, never group for team fighting. You're just in a side lane, you're split pushing all game, and if you're not doing that, you're not doing your job. So not only did you dethrone Immortals yesterday, but today, Cloud9, I think a lot of people people felt like they were looking really good. You had another kind of epic, crazy game with Cloud9. What what do you think this means for you you guys as a team ahead, ahead of Valium Katowice? Well, I'm really excited because we play SKT first game, and we had a really good showing in NA, beating like the like top two teams. Other top two teams, Immortals and, Immortals and C9, are top three teams. Yeah. And I think that has a really good statement, like, we can actually win this IEM. We're looking really good, and we've improved on a lot of our mistakes from early on in the season. And it looks like all we can do is split push, but you guys should stay tuned for IEM because yeah. I've got some exciting new stuff for you guys. Okay. Split pushing in a different lane now? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going mid lane now. Okay, yeah. Just it pu push everybody else to the sides, and then you go straight down the middle. They say that uh, when, when I was born, I actually split pushed my way out of my mother's womb. I don't... I don't know how I feel about that, all right? This is a professional interview, Darshan. All right, that's very graphic. Yeah, right. I, I'm keeping it professional, Travis. Thank you. All right, so you, know, you are known as the type of guy who makes very bold statements ahead of an international tournament. Sometimes CLG then does not show up very well at that international tournament following that bold statement. Any concern that that could happen here? Well, I feel like part of being a pro is like believing that you can be the best, believing that you are like, you can win anything. And if you don't have that attitude going to a tournament, then why bother going? Like if you're there to just like have a good time or like, yeah, we'll make some like prize money for getting last place, then like I would never want to have that attitude. And I don't like want anyone on my team to have that attitude. Like when I go to a tournament or when I go to a competition, doesn't matter if it's like I am this next week or the world finals, I'm going for first place. And obviously like if you have your expectations that high, people will like, oh wow, like nice thing you guys could get first place or like, um, it's, it might be unrealistic, but that's just how I always go. I always like shoot for the stars. I always try and push myself as hard as I can because I've been in the scene for a long time and that's just how I've always been and I still have that drive and motivation. Yeah. That drive and motivation, there we go. So now you you guys are headed to Katowice. State. What, one of the things that's really interesting to me, and I talked to Aframu a little bit ahead of, or yesterday about this, is that it feels as though things have changed a little bit. In the past, it, you know, obviously when Doublelift was around, it felt like very, uh, side lane, uh, or sorry, bottom lane focused, or maybe even sometimes mid, but you're really pulling off a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, and then also X Smithy coming in and playing a sort of more aggressive style than we're used to. Uh, just about a month ago or so, I interviewed X Smithy, and he was talking about how he kind of felt like he was strong, but people really never noticed him because he played a more supportive role, obviously now being a little bit more aggressive. Uh, was this like a very conscious decision? Was there a conversation that's like, let's mix things up, uh, you know, at some point in time, and that led to this this moment? I think it's really easy to just stereotype players in general. So like, for example, after Smithy had that Sejuani game where he missed the Sejuani ult, yeah. a lot of people had the perception that Smithy's not a good jungler. But if you look at the summer split and Worlds and like all of like I Am San Jose and all of that, he had like amazing performances the whole time. He was consistently playing really well. And people never really noticed that until recently when they're like, oh wow, Smithy's going off on a carry jungler in Italy. But he'd play amazing on Gragas, he'd play amazing on like Echo Jungle, Rek'Sai, Elise, like you name it, he's playing it really well. But um, people finally like broke out of that stereotype of oh he's just an okay jungler and like kind of realized that like maybe there's more to Smithy than the eye meets or meets the eye. Yeah. I mean, it does feel as though we're seeing many more holy moly moments from Smithy, right? Like the Baron steal, uh, you know, just just situations like that. Do you feel like that that's always been the case and people are just so now suddenly randomly noticing, or do you, do you agree with me that it feels like there's just more more big high peak moments for Smithy? 
No. I feel like that's always been the case. He's been a really good player. Like, we, yeah, he played amazing, phenomenally this weekend, but I think he's always been a really good player, and people are just now realizing that. So, again, are you guys going to win Katowice? Is this, is this what you're telling me? Yeah. I mean, I think, like, like if you look at the teams there, SKT is not playing that well. Um, I think, like, Kalgu Reapers is, like, the team that looks the strongest, but they got O2'd by um, another Chinese team recently. And, um, like, yeah, the strongest teams are, like, basically SKT and Kyle Gu, and if we make it out of our groups, I think we'll we'll be slated to get first. When do you guys leave? Wednesday. Right. So we've got a couple days to prepare. Should right. be exciting. And then a very long flight. Yep, a lot of split pushing going on. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to the fans, Darshan? Thank you guys for supporting me, um, and I'm really proud of my teammates for just doing an amazing job uh, like this weekend and like helping me just split push all game because I could I couldn't do it without them. And um, I think there's a lot of big things on the horizon for CLG. So stay tuned. Good. Well, thank you so much, Darshan, for the interview. Uh, best of luck at IM Katowice. I'm sure I'll be, I'll be interested in seeing what kind of split pushing you can pull off in Poland. For everyone else, this is Yahoo Esports.